But the car that stands out to me the most because it has a story, it has a reason for its existence, it's truly special, it's hard to get a hold of and to have been able to order and I've had some amazing times and memories with and the things I've done, the places I've been, the tracks I've driven, the events I've attended, is... Outside of London, visiting a quite famous British YouTuber's car collection, the Sh Museum Shmi 150. I've known Tim for many years, and this is my first time ever coming to the UK. And obviously, I had to come check out the collection, the Sh Museum. Tim is obviously one of the most successful and famous YouTubers, and he has quite an amazing car collection. A lot of them are actually here, so we're gonna do a tour with Tim of the Sh Museum, checking out all the cars he has here. And I'm gonna ask him a very interesting question. Which one is his favorite? Out of all the cars he owns, which is like two dozen, which one is Shmi 150's favorite car? I think he's hiding back there right now, actually. It's okay, Tim, don't be camera shy. There we How's go. There we go. <laughs> Shmi 150? Welcome. First time ever coming to the UK. First time ever? Ever. I have never, ever been well, across double the pond. Welcome. Yes. And we are here. I've seen this on social media. I've seen the videos you've posted, the videos you've sent, and it's pretty cool seeing it in person. You're here at a good time. Yes. Got a lot of the cars here in one place. I think there are the most cars here at the Museum we've ever had at the same time. Um, and it's like 20? I, I don't even It's about care. 20 at the moment, yeah. which is crazy for me because there are still some cars that aren't here. Um, it's a work in progress, we can say. You know, it's always been my dream to have a place to display my collection of cars, but also to base ourselves for making videos and for just hanging out and enjoying. And this is my idea of trying to find a balance of displaying cars in a really cool way, but still being a very active garage, because every car drives. I mean, I've just come back from having, well, in the last three days, I've been on racetracks on all three of them. Yeah, So DBS with the Nürburgring. Black Series and GT were at Donington Park. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, so for me, it's about, you know, driving cars, enjoying mm -hmm. them. Stuff happens, stuff needs to get fixed. <laughs> Windscreen, <Yeah. laughs> case in point. The um, Ford GT had an unfortunate meeting with, I, you can't even say it's a rock. This was a small boulder or something. Like, yeah. that is catastrophic. But do you know what the good thing about that is? What? It wasn't on the bodywork. That's a Glass very good point. might be expensive, but it's easy to replace. That's not even the first windscreen in this car. That's already my second. But That's brutal. You can, like, watch for scale. Like, G-Shock for scale. That thing is the size of my fist. But it's interesting. That's <laughs> lots of people sent me pictures of the same on their windscreens. Like, I guess if something hits in the right or yeah. the wrong way, that's what happens. But hey. Eh, you, you drive them. Yeah. You drive them. If that's all that happens yeah. after days on tracks, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, well, ironically, it wasn't on the track. It was no, right it was, after you got off the It was track. on the motorway, on the highway. The, the, highway, the highway, yes, highway. the freeway. Um, I don't know where to. Let's do a walkthrough. What, what, what? We got electric mini. Electric mini. Daily, current long term loan car that I have. I use it for driving backwards and forwards here to the garage. Um, backwards and forwards. I just had the image of you backing up and driving forward and backing yeah, just up. a meter or yeah. a yard. A yard. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's a short drive, but that's what I use it for. Hurricane STO probably doesn't need much introduction on the channel. What is the name of that paint? I forget. Viola Bast. Okay. Hyper metallic, it is, super glittery. The flake is gorgeous with the yellow accents. You, you'll this. Notice, I was going to say, you'll notice I have a thing for cars that are like super track focused, big yes. wings on the back. There's a theme. There is definitely a theme. All of these have gigantic wings here. This car makes my R8 feel like a soft sponge. Like it's so much more <laughs> hardcore, the steering, the transmission, everything. Yeah. This is not yours, but no, this, this, is, is, this is legendary. This exact car is legendary. It belongs to Max Cooper, the founder of Gumball 3000. This car has been on the Gumball a few times. It's an XJ220 with all of the S upgrades. It's not one of the original S's, but it has the full Bodywork, as you can see, carbon body. It weighs 1,080 kilos, which is seriously light. It's light. It has a lot of power, 680 horsepower. Um, they took away things like the foldy headlights, pop-up headlights to save weight. 
super cool car um, and Max asked if I could look after it for a while and I said yes please. Oh yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> not a bad thing to have in the garage. <laughs> no, it's like having done the gumball a few times and knowing Max very well so yes. that is currently resident here alongside my current two flagships you could say, the Ford GT and the McLaren Senna. Um, did you see the GT when I had it in the US? No, I you was, didn't. I don't even know where I was but I was not yeah. around. So oh car, no, Car Week, did I see it at Car Week? Must have done. Maybe. Somewhere, Car Week 2019 it was in the US. Just all these events and the dates and things just start <laughs> blurring together. I think the, we were together on the C8 Corvette drive. Yep. That was 2020 and that was like the last trip that we were able to do before everything got shut down. Yeah. Yeah, we were in Las Vegas driving the brand new Corvette Stingray. That was a good time. Was yeah, good. it was February 2020. Yes. Yes. I remember that well. The Crazy. last trip and then after that we were all kind of stuck home for a while. Yeah, so, so there's the GT. GT, as I'm sure everyone knows, is the ultimate American supercar, the ultimate storyline for me. I, I, Corvette Ford, whatever, let's not get into that. but. Knowing the history back in 1960s, in 1966 at Le Mans, hence the plate, by the way, mm -hmm. everything about it, they made this, they went back to Le Mans, they won again 50 years later, so cool. To have been able to secure one of the UK allocations, and there are not a lot, was a very kind of like special opportunity. And I've dri driven 8,000 miles on it. Respect. And I've driven it on nine different racetracks. Yeah. Um, and it's literally been uh, back to America. Yeah. And it's Europe. flown around the world, it's got a passport. It's got more frequent flyer miles than I do. Like <laughs> the Senna. Senna. Yes. Ultimate track performance. Insanely fast, to be honest. Um, likes to have a few hiccups because you know there's a yeah. McLaren thing going yeah. on. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to drive fast around a racetrack, my word, it's a different league. This is absolutely function over form. It's grown on me in terms of appearance. It's not the prettiest car, but man, does it look hardcore. And, and it is now immortalized as a mini GT car? Yes, yeah. we have Tarmac Works yes. mini GT, very small scale model, which is I fun. love those, the detail on those models yeah. is gorgeous. I've started That's to buy so those cool. and it just. We've I, got more coming as well. Awesome. But um, no, it's, it's, you know, the color is shmi blue, basically yep. going back, uh, which actually drives from a Ford color, which is quite fun. Oh really? Given these two and given that Bruce McLaren used to drive in GT40s. Mm. Back in the 60s. The roof scoop too. Ooh. Yeah, all of the blue carbon. Yes. That's, and the wing that is effectively two stories tall. <laughs> what an epic, and the triple exit exhaust. The Senna is crazy, yeah. absolutely crazy. I've actually stood on here. What? Oh, I heard you do handstands. No, I'm not doing handstands. <laughs> <laughs> this is my third time trying to get Tim to do handstands. No, 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 no. <laughs> The 675LT. Best, best car that McLaren have ever made, honestly. Whoa. Really? Yes. Better than the 765 LT. Yes. Better than the Senna. Yes. P1. Best car overall that the Paranet ever made. Come on, that's, that's not fair. Car. That's not fair. Okay. That, um, fabulous thing. Uh, I've done 18,000 miles in here now. Okay. Um, I've had it from new six years, over six years. The first time I ever sat in a 675 LT, I got a ride. I am by no means a small person. I can definitely lose probably another 20 pounds. I was definitely heavier then and I got in the car and went to sit down and my butt did not touch the bottom of the seat. I just kind of got wedged into the bolsters and I was like, oh, I got to lose some weight. That's my lasting memory of the 675 LT. Oh so I have the narrow seats or the regular seats they're called. The, brick, the yeah. wider seats are called touring seats. It's but American spec. Set of seats to, are the same thing. I have to spec them for me and I fit in the normal seat. So. I'm going with the normal yeah, seat. Yeah. See, Americans need fatter, wider seats than their McLarens. <laughs> so normally here, my SLS Black Series would be right here, and the GT Black Series would be over hiding over well. there. Okay. But the SLS is going to be back very soon. Yeah. It's having a few bits done because when I bought it, I resprayed it, and in a period of five months, I drove twelve thousand miles. Oh, okay. And a lot of that was two hundred miles an hour plus on the Autobahn in Germany, <laughs> or at the Nurburgring. So it got very hot often. And it turns out the electronics and the wiring and that side of things didn't appreciate that much. Ooh. And trying to source parts through the last year has been horrific. Yes. So we've kind of found temporary fixes and this, that, and the other. But I decided probably six months ago, we've got to fix all of this. So being done properly because the value of the car is shot Oh up. man, they are so astronomical. Properly. Absolutely astronomical. Um, the funny thing is we try and work it out. I think across my fleet this year, We'll drive between forty and fifty thousand miles. Wow! In the calendar year, across all the cars. Yeah, which is that's crazy. a lot. That's a lot. That's um, a lot. When a lot of these cars get five thousand miles, yeah. if that put on them. Yeah. 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 Um, 
GT8 here, yes. one you can't get in the US, nope. one I love. Um, it's old school, it's the last of the old school. Heavy manual gearbox, heavy steering, heavy clutch pedal. Doesn't make much sense because it's not got all that much power from a naturally aspirated V8 and a full carbon body. Whoa. Why? What? Who knows? <laughs> is this a dogleg seven speed manual? No, 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 or this is the regular six speed, six speed regular still? Six speed. Um, the arrow is so aggressive too. Yeah. It's just it's cool. It's a cool car, and yeah. And it sounds amazing. Yes. So much fun to drive. Aston V8. It's got the full wide body treatment too. Yeah. That's really cool. But you know what? While we're over here, before we go to the rest of the garage, we gotta talk about the random stuff. <laughs> There's just this like tent. <laughs> yes. So long term, the garage is gonna become inspired by racetrack and hospitality. So we've got a cool theme that we've got in progress. This is temporary until this becomes full storage and we just have a seating area and my F1 thing will come over here. And <laughs> yeah, the casual F1 over there, yeah, my F1 thing. But then the, the funny thing is like the stuff, Oh my the God. stuff everywhere, you know, all the spare wheels and tires, oh, yeah. all the, you know how it is, yeah. all the car covers, all C-Tech helmets. chargers, helmets. Yeah, so C-Tech are amazing. They're a partner of the Schmuseum. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've got they, two for my cars at home. Yeah, you, you need these things to mm -hmm. keep, especially when you don't drive cars all the time. You need them to be turnkey. Yes. You need to keep the batteries alive. Yes. Um, There's a massive stack of license plates. Yeah, every, <laughs> I've got every, every plate for every car I've ever owned. I've got some display plates, like US plates down here as well, road signs. Like cars I've imported, I've got the um, like German plates here somewhere. Oh you gotta hang those all up on the wall. It's yeah. gonna fill up the entire wall. Yeah, but then all the other stuff, like the fitted luggage for my GTC4 Lusso. Oh, so the... this, this costs as much as my 401k. It's a, <laughs> yeah, Ferrari fitted luggage from the factory. Yeah, just so much cool Man, stuff. That's crazy. I can't wait to have it all. Cup open. two R's. These are from the AMG GT. Yeah, with the from the Black Series. You get. Oh, these are the GT Black stuff. Series ones. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So I've got two sets of wheels and tires for it because I do quite a few track days with it. Is that a Mini Cooper front grille? Yeah, I used to own a Mini. It was, it was also blue, bump. wasn't it? No, it was green. It was, oh, green. It was green. I'll have oh, another okay. one one day. So okay. another bit of memorabilia like the Senna panels. Up there. Oh, we got to go up to the mezzanine. Wait, we we have half the... <laughs> We've got half the garage still to have a look at, right? <laughs> Clio V6. You do get these in the... No, you nope. don't get these. We don't the have US. any Renaults in America. So, Little hatchback, you know where the engine is, right? It's back there. Yeah. It's crazy. It's Nobody mid-engine. Nobody expects that. Yeah. It's a, yeah, a V6. In so a these are, these would be functional, like. Yes. They look like the side intakes on the Ford GT. The shape reminds yes. me of it on the, on like back the 05 Ford yeah, GT, but, yeah. 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 This thing is also wide, like. So, but I bought this as a car that needs a lot of work. Okay. So that's where, what we're about to do. We're going to completely transform it. It's going to become something epic. And then I bought this very recently. <laughs> it's random, I know, but it's got a V8. And who doesn't Enough love a V8 wagon? Enough said. A naturally aspirated so V8 wagon. I bought this to tow that, kind of. It just feels like that's 2004, that's 2003, you know, like that's, that's what would have happened. This is quite an abusing site. There's, there's hypercars, there's supercars, there's rare cars, but then there's a E-Class wagon towing a Renault Clio V6. <laughs> Ah, uh, variety. Over here, we have the parts of my F1 car. Now, this is really cool because I got into this without really knowing what it was. I had some pictures of a Formula car and a trailer. Um, it was kind of like, you know what, let's do it. Let's go for it. Um, it turned up, and thanks to the internet's analysis, we quickly worked out what it was. It is the 1997 Williams FW19 show car chassis number one. So show car, it's made in the full molds, but it's not a car that you can make run. But it's chassis number one of the last year that Williams won the Formula One World Championship with Jacques Villeneuve. Wow. So it's a really special thing, like a really special thing. The reason it's like this is because we took it up to TDF, who have packaged up some of the parts, um, to basically dismantle it all because it's now going to go for paint to put okay. it back into the period correct delivery. Ah, uh, okay. To restore it, to make it look good. So we've got various parts at the moment being redone. The steering wheel, the wheels are off, the body panels are here, some of the internal components are being reworked because let's just say it's a special and valuable thing. So we need to it's crazy. bring just it back to glory. A disassembled F1 show car, but it's still, yes. that's carbon? Yes, yeah, that's yeah. That's full, that's full carbon, that's Yeah, yeah, crazy. still just yeah. slightly thinner layers, basically. Yeah, wow. Um, we're currently standing in what will be the lounge okay. in the future, looking out at the view. And then where the GT Black series is, is going to be my, what we're calling Halo space. 
which is like the latest car to arrive. It'll be nicely lit. Oh, nice. Um, the funny story with this, I actually had it resprayed yep. uh, from brand new. So within a week of owning it, I took it to be painted, <laughs> which upset a lot of purists. I'm yeah. sorry for that. Well, but because I think they said only Project One owners could do non-standard color palette, right? Later on in the order, in some countries you could. So oh, of okay. the 375 of these in the USA, only eight are non-standard wow. colors. In the UK, none of them. They okay. wouldn't allow a single non-standard non color. So the only way I could have my non-standard color of choice was to respray it. Yes. Now, a lot of people are like, no, what are you gonna do to the value? Oh my gosh, how can you do that? I've driven it 6,000 miles already, multiple track days. It's been to the Middle East. It's coming to the USA, I hope, at some point. Ooh. It's, yeah, it's not about value. This is about owning no. and enjoying. I was very lucky to actually be in the launch campaign that Mercedes AMG did with this car when they originally presented it to the world. So I feel very closely attached to it. Yeah. It's like, it's a special car and it makes 850 horsepower thanks oh. to some upgrades. And it sounds better now. Yes, it, it sounds does sound nice. better, much better now. Um, and this paint is gorgeous. This is solar beam yellow. Solar beam yellow indeed. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful color. SLS Black Series and solar beam yellow is one of my favorite yeah. spec cars. And no, it's not leaking. It's That's just water. water. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. This fun. is factory matte paint? Yeah, the fun continues. This is a Cupra Formenta, which is like our team car at the moment. It's okay. a long-term loan car we have from Cupra, which we use when we're bombing backwards and forwards to take these cars to places, which happens a lot. Yes. Um, Aston Martin DBS, James Bond era. Yes, sir. I bought this on a whim because I saw it in midnight blue and I thought it looked amazing because they're normally black, gray, silver, or yes. white. I saw a blue one and you might have noticed I have a thing for blue cars. It was done. It, uh, it, nobody had to. <laughs> nobody had to convince yeah. you to buy that SF90. Most powerful car I have. Yes. But now, until the arrival of my rather Zenvo. extreme Zenvo. Yes. SF90. In the first four weeks, I drove nearly four thousand miles. Yeah. How? <laughs> Nine countries in oh. the first four weeks. Oh, because you had hit with the Luso out all over yeah. Europe. The thing with this, a thousand horsepower is on paper stupid. But what Ferrari have done so well with the SF90 is that it's fun to drive even if you're not using a thousand horsepower. The combination of the technology with the hybrid system, but also the engagement that you have from it. And I spent ages working on this specification. Blue Electrico is a lovely yes. color. The inside is in the dual tone, blue sterling with Savia beige. That's yeah. nice. And it's a plug-in hybrid. And it is indeed. With so a Ferrari have, branded charger. We always have full go ready for the journey from here to wherever. Blue, Blue Electrico is definitely gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, our mutual friend 312 Supercars is Pista is yes. also, which you were there for delivery of that yeah, car. Yeah, I went to the handover with gorgeous. my Ford GT. Oh yeah, that was One there. of the reasons why I've ended up with this color. Ah. Um, it's becoming a very famous Ferrari color, yeah. but it looks so good. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Do you know the story of this? Wasn't this the car that you had before the 12C? Uh, ish, I had this, ish. then a Z4, then an R8, then okay. a 12C, complicated. But the fun with this for me is I bought this car back in 2010. I was already making videos on my channel. It wasn't my first car, but it was the first car on my channel we ever called the Schmimobile, which ah, we now nickname all the cars. Yes. And the first time I ever in my life made a video talking to a camera was driving in this car. That exact I, car. This car, this one. Yes. I sold it in 2012 because at the time I needed the money for the next car for my R8. Never saw it for nine years. Then coincidentally managed to make contact with the owner. Um, and I said, I'd love one day to buy it back. And he said, here's the figure. I said, okay, done. Deal. Um, That's really cool. And it's the same plate I had on it and I'll never sell it. So I spent a lot of money getting it restored. Yeah. Um, and having a lot of mechanical fixes and things at McGurk's in the UK uh, to make it, you know, it's a special car. It's yeah. priceless for me. Absolutely. Right? It's priceless for me. Someday I, I would also like to buy back my first car, the Boss 302 Laguna Seca. Oh, I don't know if I'd, the black and red nice. one. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd buy the exact one back because that one was pretty beat up, but I would <laughs> like to have, I would like to have one at some point. Yeah, this, I, I mean, for me, it's the fact, I, when I bought it back, there's a storage pouch in the driver's seat under your knees. Put my hand in it to see if anything was in there. There was a letter from my mum from 2011, still in the car. No when I way! It back. Oh, okay, yeah. that's that's truly special. Yeah, that's so truly special. Like, that had to happen. Yeah. Some GT. would say I have too many AMGs. <laughs> There's no such thing as too many AMGs. But I really enjoy them. I yeah. had the GTR, the GTR Pro, the GTR yeah. Roadster, Black Series, the SLS, the C63. Yeah. I, 
I love these AMGs. And GTR Roadster was again a limited run. We actually put bucket seats in here. Oh, really? They're the coupe's bucket seats, which the factory won't sell you. Interesting. So we had to rewire so much of it because it normally has electric seats, mm -hmm. electric, but heated, whatever, connected to the electric steering column. The ECU for the steering column is managed through the seat. What? So if you take the seat out, you the can't steering the steering can't column. Move. Oh my God. So they had to put in, Opus did it in Germany. They had yeah. to do a whole load of complicated things to make the steering wow. column still work. But hey, mission success. Yes. And then my Black Series Trio is completed with the C63. With the Aero Kit, yes. Um, yes, with the Aero Kit. I just really wanted one of these to complete the Trio for yeah. me, you know? This is the world's most aggressive C-Class. It has the wide body, it has the badge of 6.3, even though it has a 6.2, but... It's hilarious it's just... <laughs> that they made it. Like, why? Yeah. Um, and there are only 800 of them, so it's, you know, pretty rare. rare. There's less than 100 in America. Yeah. So this is this is really cool. And then the Skittles continue. Yeah, this is actually Heritage the edition. rarest car of the collection. Oh, really? So Mark III Focus RS, there, will, there won't be a Mark IV. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the end. Um, the UK has always been a huge market for Ford hatchbacks. And as the number one selling market for the Mark III Focus RS, Ford made the final last 50 cars as the Heritage Edition in this color, which was the original launch color of the Escort back mm. in 1968. Um, 50 cars, one for each of the dealers here in the country that had sold the most. Oh, cool. So I was very lucky, because it's one per dealer. Yeah. I was very lucky to be able to secure that car. Um, it's actually crazy because the values are more than double what it cost me for a Focus. That's crazy. That's worth twice as much as my Vantage Roadster. That seems backwards. <laughs> that doesn't make any That's sense. That's worth more than my DBS. <laughs> that, that also doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> yes, exactly. At one point you had three Focus RSs, right? I did. I had yeah. the blue one. The red, red one, one and an orange one, yeah. I love them, they're great cars. And for me, the Ford thing as well, because I also have my GT500. Yes. Carbon fiber track pack Shelby yes. GT500, which I've done 12,000 miles with in a year in the US alone, given I'm rarely in the US. Like, <laughs> this, that's, that actually makes me feel a little ashamed because my 2018 Shelby 350R has 12,000 miles in like two years. So I haven't- And, and I haven't, you're, you're like, it's at your home. Yeah, yeah. I but no, I, lo I like to drive, right? Yeah, no. So even this, even this being super special, I've still done 6,000 miles with it. Good. Which some people are like, ah, can you oh, drive it? But I can't not. Um, these are up just because we had the Clio and stuff underneath. Uh, this is a, a silly one, really. This is probably worth no more than $1,500. No. <laughs> um, 1 1.2 litre, 73 horsepower. Oh, man. Clio, 1.15 litre, 1,150cc engine. Wonderful thing. But the story is, when I was 17, I had an identical car. The car I owned actually got involved in an accident, mm -hmm. not when I had it, more recently got written off, got scrapped into a cube of metal, Yes. bought the cube of metal, I own that. Oh, oh so you, you ended it, up getting the cube of metal. I do own it, yeah. yes, I do own it. <laughs> Found an identical one, like to the option, the same yeah. options, uh, exactly, exactly, exactly the same. And that's the plate I had on mine. So I was like, do you know what? Gonna do it. I just look at it and it brings back the memories, the smells yeah. of it bring back yeah. the memories. So for me, it's kind of more than, it's worth a lot more than $1,500 yeah. you know, to have. The nostalgia, it's the mm. sentimental value. And it, remind, you know, it reminds me because I used to, my first road trips were in my Clio. The first time I went on a big adventure and actually made videos with friends, not for YouTube or anything, Just was fun. driving in one of those and never. It'll be cool seeing this and that yeah. together. Like, never back then did I ever think like even one of these would be possible, let alone this whole like adventure and journey. And, yes. You know, there's so much more to do here. Uh, on the Schmuseum channel, we're sharing more of the build and behind the scenes of looking after the collection because, you know, with these cars, if you drive them, stuff happens, like yeah. the window. When and it has to be taken somewhere and get fixed and brought back again. But it's like a dream for me just being here. Like, honestly, it's, it's crazy. This is so cool for me personally because I've also been doing car YouTube videos since college. So that was 2013 for me. And I remember starting it watching Gee, Tim. <laughs> and like, I think we started running into a couple of events and things like yeah. that. And now years later, like I would, we're friends now. We see each other all over the place. And it's just so cool being here, seeing all these cars. It's so cool to have you here. Cause over the last two years, we've always met up in your side of the world. Yes, now my first here. time here across the pond, as you guys would say. Yeah. Yeah. Can we go up there? Yeah, we can go up there. <laughs> up on the mezzanine. Up on the mezzanine. The Cause we also get a top down view of the cars, which is really cool. Also. These posters are, the banners are really awesome too. The GT500 is currently on its way 
It is. It back here. Back soon. Or not back here. First time ever here. Yeah, we talked about the SLS being away and yes. the 500. We didn't touch on the Lusso. I have a GTC4 Lusso yes. V12. Ferrari V12, greatest Blue, engine ever. gorgeous. Yeah, um, which is just a lovely car to drive. That car I got carried away because a Ferrari V12 price does this mm -hmm. very quickly if you drive it. Mm -hmm. I bought it in, I want to say four or five months ago. Yeah. And 7,000 miles. <laughs> You get a top-down view of the museum, which is a really cool vantage point. But first, <laughs> I walked up here and I was like, wait, what in the world are these? They are swatches, but not ordinary. Actually, these are normal-sized watches. We're actually very small people. Yeah, exactly. Yes. No, they're, they're called Maxi swatches. They, they kind of make them as special editions, and I have an obsession with collecting them. <laughs> this is, these are cool. Some of these are old, too. Like from the 80s. 80s? Oh my god. I, I have a lot of wrist swatches. Um, you know, when it comes to being a oh, watch collecting and car collecting tend to go hand in yes, hand. Car I'm a bit watch behind people. on the normal watch collecting. I have a couple of nice watches, but not like the cars. I have a big collection of swatches. I yes. really like them. So, so watch out on the videos for the different swatches that Tim wears. Yeah, they're housed up here for the time being. With you the, should uh, wear one of these as like a belt. In the you, video. you can. Just like, you can. It's like a wrestling up. belt. You yeah. Can do them up and wear them around you. That'd be. That'd be great. <laughs> Here is parts of a Senna, or yeah. thus your, your Senna. Yeah, parts of my Senna from that fateful day three oh. years ago. Where I remember I was, seeing that and like, oh God, that yeah. That was the wheel of a truck. Oh man. But I just have, like, as you go around, so many random things. Carbon parts that were on my Taycan. Oh, wait, did you get rid of that? The yeah, I don't have the one? Taycan anymore, okay. that's, that's gone. I just liked seeing your charging nightmares because every charging station it went to was not functional. <laughs> EV welcome life. to the UK. <laughs> and welcome to the UK with electric. It's fixed view. now that I have the SeaTac charger here. There you go. You can charge everything easily. But no, the view looking down on cars that's is so always cool. cool. Just so you'll see the little red and white, essentially, it's going to be yeah, a racetrack. Racetrack. Race track. That's the plan. That's going to be so cool. The fateful question yes. that I'm going to ask you. What's your favorite car in the collection? <laughs> You have to pick one. Favorite car. Favorite mine. car, holistically. And this is unfair like, no, because no, some are nostalgic, some are well driving, some are valuable. It's actually not as hard as you might think. Now, oh. I obviously feel very lucky that there are some amazing cars here and you know, many of these cars I will never sell. Uh, that's my intention is to buy them from new, run them, build up the memories and keep them. And you know, cars like the GT Black Series, the SLS Black Series, the SF90, the STO, I've had some amazing, amazing times with already. But the car that stands out to me the most because it has a story, it has a reason for its existence. It's truly special. It's hard to get a hold of and to have been able to order. And I've had some amazing times and memories with and the things I've done, the places I've been, the tracks I've driven, the events I've attended is my Ford GT. Wow. Yeah. The Ford GT. The Ford GT. Took it to the USA. Yes. I've driven it at the Nürburgring. I've taken it to Sardinia. It's been to the Goodwood Festival of Speed a few times. It's, it's just a, a car with a reason to be, you know, a car that links to history, a car that has so much motorsport background and feel when you're driving it and so many interesting conversations around it. You know, you pull up to a gas station or a shop or whatever in a Lambo, people have their preconceptions about you. They, you're a Lamborghini driver. You pull up somewhere in a Ford GT, especially here in Europe, mm -hmm. you'd be like, what's that? You know, that's wow. a Ford? Yeah. I, I didn't know Ford made a car like that. And I love that kind of conversation and lack of preconception about the car. As a former Ford employee, a current owner of a Ford, I love hearing that. That's so <laughs> cool. One of my best friends loves the Ford GT yeah. so much. It's like his favorite thing in the world too. So oh, also, Matt, you'll love hearing that too. There you go. Yeah. 3150, the one car, the Ford GT. But I like the fact also, you know, the GT goes with the Focus RS, yes. hatchback, yes. GT500, muscle car, mm -hmm. and then you've got the supercar. Have you ever driven a GT350R? I have. Yeah. Okay. It's good fun. Very like different that. to the very, GT500. Very, 500. very different. That's the one I'd like, like to Like, how do you, I, I, it's one of those, like, you, you can't go wrong. You know, they're both great. Yes, in their own special, unique ways. Yeah. Ford Performance is really they're capable of building some really special vehicles and like they can hang with the latest, greatest from Europe. Yeah. Fanciest cars from Italy and everything. Yeah. 
and now stick that GT500 engine in a Raptor. Yeah, Raptor. Winning plan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right when gas is like $8 a gallon, you know, yeah. that's something. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be epic. Well, Tim, thank you so much. Absolute this was pleasure. awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this tour of this museum. I certainly very much enjoyed getting to see this and talk with you about the cars. It's so cool seeing them on social media and now in person, watching the videos and then seeing them in person. Just phenomenal. If you don't follow Shmi150, obviously go follow and this museum and what's the watch page now? Schwatch. Schwatch. <laughs> For more about these. <laughs> <laughs> more about the watches if you like watches. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I am going to enjoy the rest of my time in the UK and then I'm going to Germany tomorrow and going to the Nürburgring for the first time ever. I'm excited about that. Thanks for watching.